Sit back, relax, unless you're driving. It's time for That's a Freebie. You're listening to That's a Freebie, the only podcast that mixes all the latest news from my little world with interesting stories from the rest of the world. I'm your host, Diggy, and as usual, I will open with an Ask a Freebie question. Uh, This is where I answer questions from all of you. Uh, This week's question is from Tom. Tom has a reply for Seb. Uh, I'm not going to go back through the whole Tom and Seb saga, uh, that, yeah, that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it a saga at this point. Uh, listen to the, well, listen to every previous episode. But if you go back and listen to, I think it was two to three episodes ago, uh, there is a quick recap of, of what happened. We are basically discussing immortality. And this is Tom's response. Tom says, Seb, thank you for your correspondence and updating us on all the terms and conditions of immortality. I have carefully considered your offer. And in the words of Duncan Bannatyne, I'm out. Diggy, I was pondering the topic of memorable adverts after you mentioned it a few weeks back. Our shared experience of memorable ads is obviously linked to terrestrial TV and ad breaks. Therefore, with the rise of streaming and declined our traditional TV, do you think the youth of today will miss out on this collective experience? Or is it similar, similarly, I can't say that apparently, uh, replicated on our chosen form of media slash entertainment? I enjoy the show. Keep it up. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Tom is a friend of the show. Uh, I was asked recently, actually, what that means. A uh, friend of the show is somebody who I either know in real life or... Uh, somebody who is uh, a part of That's a Freebie Plus and is a frequent contributor. Uh, that's how you get friend of the show status. Uh, Tom, I actually know in real life, uh, just for clarity's sake. Uh, so let's let's well let's split this into the two parts. First of all, thank you, Tom, for your response to Seb. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not so sure on whether I would want to be part of that immortality either, because, yeah, you get to watch your friends grow old and die. I don't think anybody wants that, really, do they? Although, you know, you can make new friends along the way. But it's not the same, is it? Uh, And to move on to the second part of Tom's question. uh, Yeah, I do think that they are missing out. It's definitely something that I notice with my children. Like, they... They discuss TV shows uh, with one another. Uh, For the most part, my kids actually like the same shows, so that helps. And they're also quite good at uh, sharing the television as well. They will watch something that the other doesn't want to watch uh, because they know that eventually they'll get to watch something that they do want to watch. Uh, But they don't see ad breaks and I don't even think they understand the concept of an ad break. Cause when adverts come on, like if we're watching some on Amazon who have recently added advertisements to, uh, their package, uh, or their, their, the, the tier level that we are on, they definitely, they just tune out, they turn away uh, half the time. They forget that they're watching the TV. If an ad comes on and they go and start doing something else and they come back and you can tell they're like, Oh, this is still on. And they just start staring at the TV again and slowly sit down and, and, and watch it, uh, which I'm not too sure about really. I, I don't know what I'd prefer them to, to, to be, uh, as in like, do I prefer it when they're glued to their iPads or do I prefer it when they're glued to the TV? I mean, neither are great, but at the same time, I, I don't buy into the hype that they're bad inherently. Uh, they're bad if you don't allow uh, breaks, if you don't teach them how to use them responsibly. Uh, that just then becomes a babysitter. But the truth is, sometimes you need that. We all live busy lives. Sometimes you actually do need something that can just occupy them while you uh, get on with things and do what you need to do. So I don't actually have a big problem with that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so back to advertisements. Um, yeah, they're totally missing out. They really are. Uh, that's, that's how I've discovered what I wanted to f- for Christmas or for my birthdays and things like that. Uh, now we'll ask the kids what they want for Christmas or the birthdays. And I do find that the very few ones that they see, uh, are the things that they'll ask for. So they're definitely influenced by it. Uh, but they don't see enough ads to get a varied range. And, uh, like it's always things like the LOL surprises and things like that. It's like, well, that's not really a birthday or Christmas present material. Not not your main present anyway, but that's all they've seen advertised. So they tend to do ask for stuff like that. Uh, or 
things they'll see in the shop. Uh, I do find that when we go to toy shops and we go to like Asda, where they've got like the toy aisle and things like that, they are a little bit more interested in what's there. They don't go looking for something specific because they know, uh, well, they don't know what's there. So they, they are a bit more inquisitive, which I guess is good. They, they'll, they'll say like, what is this? What does it do? And, you know, we'll, 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 well, half the time we can't tell ourselves, but uh, when we can, uh, we'll tell them. So yeah, I do actually think that they are missing out on something great. Uh, as much as the ads were just there to get us to spend money, uh, I do, I do think they were wonderful. I miss them. I miss the little jingles. Uh, ads were amazing, uh, which is something I never thought I'd say. Uh, so yes, thank you, Tom, for your question, and thank you for letting me know you enjoyed the show. I will indeed keep it up. <laughs> just realized what I said. You set me up there, didn't you? Uh, anyway, if you would like to ask a question to open the show, just head to the show notes or that's a freebie.com, uh, where you will find, uh, the link to the new multi-purpose feedback form, uh, which not only allows you to submit and ask a freebie question, it allows for submitting of suggestions for pod tales and general feedback as well. So this week uh, in the news, uh, or, you know, my week today, I, I really don't know what to call this section. It doesn't really matter. This is the news section. This is where I talk about myself uh, or oh, everything peripheral to me, everything that's going on around me. I don't know. Uh, how do you describe it? It's, this is just like the, the news section. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so you might remember last week I mentioned that I was buying, well, I, I wasn't buying. I bought some LED lights for my daughter to go around the edge of a bedroom. Uh, she loves them. They're amazing. Uh, she can choose exactly, like there are a hundred lights on these LED lights and she can choose a specific light on the row and change its color, change whether it's flashing or not. She loves that she can do this. She keeps creating patterns. I mentioned it last week. She keeps creating uh, repeating patterns, loves it. Uh, so I asked my son if he wanted some, and he said, yes, I absolutely do want some. And so I bought him some, I put them up. Um, slight caveat, if you're going to put up LED lights, and so what I did, I went and bought little tiny plastic hooks with adhesive uh, from just a pound shop uh, to put them up. And I found that they're just not strong enough. Uh, they keep falling down. Not completely falling down. There's just the odd one that falls down. I've noticed it's where, like in the area of, of where they stood, where they would be uh, like walking past. Like the, there is a section where it plugs into the wall because all the what, plug sockets in the UK are down low generally. Um, I have to have a section where it runs up the side of the wall. And that section where it's running up the side of the wall is the section that keeps falling down. So it's it's where they're walking past and they're, they're, like they're, they're causing a draft that causes them to pull down. So I just need a better solution. I probably just need to get those hooks that you knock into the wall with a hammer, uh, you know, with the little pins in them, or little nails in them, sorry. Um, I don't know. It's not desperate, but yeah, if, you, if you're putting them up, just find something that's nice and strong because otherwise it will drive you insane that they keep falling down. So got my son the lights. There was a problem that I didn't anticipate. And that problem is that uh, the, their bedrooms are close. They're, so their bedrooms, well, our bedroom uh, is in between theirs. But because theirs are so close, the, uh, <laughs> they can control one another's lights. Uh, not on purpose. Like they, they select their own lights from the list. But it seems like when you make changes, it changes both sets. Uh, no idea why it does that. I can't seem to do anything to stop it from doing that. But it, it also doesn't seem to do it all the time as well. So it must just depend on where they are in the bedroom. I've noticed if they're both sat on their beds, because they have quite high beds, uh, you know, the ones where you climb up a ladder to them. They're not bunk beds. They just have, they have a desk underneath their beds. When they are on the beds, they don't have the issue. So uh, basically, we've told them when you can change your lights, sit, sit on the bed. It's the easiest way to get them to do it. Uh, that was a, a a little problem that I didn't expect. And anyway, it's fine. It's it's okay. It's 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 all sorted itself out, kind of to a degree. Uh, so something that happened this morning, uh, well, literally like half an hour ago, well, I I discovered this little problem. Uh, and guess what it involves? It involves the local Asda, as a lot of my stories do. Uh, this situation happened because they've changed 
the uh how do you put it the entry system to asda so it used to just be a really big fire you know like where they have the, the glass um cube outside well, i know it's not completely glass but it's you know the windowed cube outside uh that's always the fire for for every asda i've ever been to uh so you walk in and you can there's two entrances you go in either entrance and uh there's two entrances then on the inside of asda uh you've got the one on the right and the one on the left now it's always technically been the one on the left is the entrance the one on the right is the exit because that's from behind the tills uh but re realistically everybody just walked in through both doors and there was always baskets there for you to grab and go in uh makes sense however what they've decided now and i can kind of see why they've done it i think this particular restaurant has a lot of theft uh but what they've what they've done now is the fire area they've actually built a full-on barrier in the middle of it so you can't you can't basically walk across the whole thing. You can if you walk in one door, you're stuck on one side, and you walk in the other door, and you're stuck on the other. So they've now made it so that you can't enter Asda from one of the entrances to the foyer. You have to walk round to the other side. Uh, again, not a huge problem, except they've done nothing to inform customers of this. So this morning I goes walking towards it, and there are massive red stickers on the doors now that that say no entry to let you know that you can't go in there and the doors don't actually activate from the outside anymore uh you have to uh, you can only activate them from the inside uh again it makes sense right however if somebody's coming out when you walk up the doors open so people that don't know are just walking in they're walking in and then they get into the main entrance of asda on the inside and you can no longer get into the supermarket without walking around and going back through the tills so everybody's doing that and it's just causing chaos and people can't, no, nobody's looking at it and going, oh, I can see what's happened here. I'm not supposed to go in. <laughs> like as soon as I was walking towards it and I saw the barrier through the door and I went, oh, they've obviously changed the entrance. I'll just walk around like dead obvious. So that's what I did. I walked around. You can get in just fine. They've even put the baskets so they're on the outside. So you can't even get a basket if you go in the the wrong door now which again it makes sense right so i goes around does my shopping as i'm coming out for some it's just basically a group of people stood in the fire going how do you get in i don't know so so i said it's it's easy they've just changed the entrance so you have to go in through that side and you come out of this side but why would they do that I'm like, well it's obviously because of all the theft like you can't walk in and out of this asda without somebody pushing you out of the way while the run while they're trying to run with a shopping trolley and then the shopping trolley wheels lock at the door and they fall over it it happens all the time it's hilarious i'm really sad i'm not going to get to see that anymore however <laughs> It's probably better for Asda this way, right? Uh, so, so I, I'm like, because I'm, I'm trying to get past them. So I'm trying to say, guys, you just need to go out and go around. I'm like, oh, it's stupid, it's stupid. I don't understand all this. And I honestly, I felt like saying, it's not that you don't understand. You just don't want to understand. You've walked in, you can't get in. And instead of thinking, I oh, know, I'll go round, look at the signs, you, you're stuck there. I do think though that Asda could have done a better job at this. Like, either do a slow transition. Uh, so make it so you because you, it would be possible there is a there is a gate that you can open that would then allow people to still get in so do a slow transition or better yet just have a member of staff stood at the exit or two members of staff for protection just in case people get rowdy just have them stood at the exit door and as people walk up to the exit door just explain the change it's not that hard you probably only need to do it for a day or two and because it's going to be the same people that are going there over and over and if it's somebody new they're going to look up and read the signs to work out how to get in and out or they're going to go oh i can't get in there because nobody else is it's it's such an easy fix but they clearly haven't considered how stupid the general public are we have started playing a new game in the car uh, the reason for this, so I've mentioned this before, the kids are not very good at being sat in the back of the car together. Uh, they just, they don't fight, but they get really silly. And I imagine this is completely normal for all children. I don't think this is somewhat linked to my children. Uh, actually, a friend of the show, Chris, did mention earlier this week that... Uh, he, he reckons anybody who listens to the show that doesn't know me personally probably thinks that my kids are absolutely feral because uh, of the, the, the things I tell people about them. Um, and he's right, they are. They're absolutely feral. They're unbelievable. No, no, they're not. I'm joking. That That's mean. They're, they're not. They're, they're actually pretty normal kids. They just do some wacky stuff at times. Uh, one of them has ADHD, as you know, which just creates some funny situations. Uh, they're not feral. 
I promise. Uh, well, sometimes I feel like they are, uh, but I'm sure all parents feel like that. Uh, so anyway, we've decided, well, I say we've decided. I tried to come up with a way of stopping them from fighting. The first thing I tried was one of them always sits in the front and we alternate it every couple of weeks. Uh, that actually does work to a degree, uh, but it's not been perfect because they start uh, every now and then one of them, like whoever's in the back, usually if the boy's in the back, he'll start uh, like putting his hands through the seat and tickling the back of her head or something like that just to annoy her because they like annoying one another. That's what I've noticed. They really like getting on each other's wick. Uh, and the other thing I've noticed is when my daughter's in the front, uh, she she's very expressive with her hands. So she will be like playing a little game in her head or she'll be thinking about something, but she'll be, her hands will be waving about all over the place. And it's really quite distracting uh, when I'm trying to drive. And I have to keep saying to her, keep your hands still. Or, you know, don't wave your hands in front of the mirror, things like that. Uh, and the other thing is that she's also started liking listening to music. So she might want to be listening to the radio. He doesn't. They end up fighting over it because he decides the best way to stop her from listening to the radio is to sing along with the radio. And we're like, well, you can't really stop him from singing. Unfortunately, he's not a very good singer. And he knows he's not. He does it on purpose. Uh, so I came up with the idea of uh, playing games uh, but games that don't involve me having to do too much because otherwise I'm not paying attention to what's going on. Uh, so we started uh, the the mini punch game where you see a mini and you can punch the other person. Obviously didn't think that through, did I? Because I'm getting punched while I'm driving. The kids are trying to punch either one in the front, one in the back. And, uh, and overall, I don't want to encourage them punching one another. It was just one of those ideas that came out, came out of my head and uh, because we were with somebody else who was playing it, so it, it, we carried it on and it just didn't, it didn't work. So I uh, innovated a little bit. We started calling it Spot the Mini. Now, it hasn't got a proper name, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm calling it Spot the Mini. And what we do now is if you see a Mini driving on the road, you get a point. And we've got a little tally app on the, my phone. Uh, and at the end of every journey, we we add the Minis to our tally that we've spotted. And whoever spots the most minis by the end of the year, so this is something we'll do on New Year's Eve. Uh, we'll probably do it just before midnight. Whoever spotted the highest number of minis gets the that gets the crown of King Mini, Princess Mini, Queen Mini, or Prince Mini, depending on who you are. So if you're me, my wife, my daughter, or my son. And you've got to get a little trophy as well. We've not quite decided on the trophy yet. And then what happens is the as of New Year's Day, we reset the counters and we start again. And then th that person gets to be the, the king, queen, princess or prince for a whole year. And then they have to hand the trophy over or keep it for the next year. This is working surprisingly well. We've been doing this for a week now and they love it. I, I actually quite love it, actually. It's 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 fun. Uh, so we've been doing that for, for, for a week and we've had to make a few rule adjustments along the way. So the rules now are that it's only when we're in the car and we're driving uh, you don't, we, we, and we can't count parked up minis. The mini has got to be on the road driving and it's got to be on the same road that we are on <laughs> and or driving across the road that we're on. That's OK as well. So as long as it touches the road that we're on or, or goes in front of us, as long as we can see it in front of us, that's kind of what matters. Uh, and the reason for these rules are quite simple. Whenever we go past the car park, one of them goes, oh, there's six minis on that car park. I've counted them all. Uh, or they'll see one parked on the driveway and count that one. And of course, you, you, if it's on a driveway, it's always going to be in that position whenever we're going past it certain times in the day. So we've done that so that it varies the amount of minis you're going to see. And it, it's worked. We, it, it's it's done quite well. Uh, I think currently I've got 40. My daughter's got 42. Uh, the boy has got about nine or something like that. And my wife's got like seven. Uh, but the daughter's been in the back of the car. She's now switched. Sorry, in the front of the car. She's now switched to the back of the car. And my son's in the front of the car. So I expect his mini count to go up. Uh, my wife is the outlier because she isn't in the car with us very often. Uh, we tend to spend more time in the car. So she's allowed to count ones uh, that she sees when she's walking because she walks to and from work. So she's allowed to count the ones when she's walking. And for the rest of us, the rules are that we all have to be together in the car for, for, us to be, for them to count. Uh, she doesn't. She's allowed to count them when she's on her own, on her way to and from work. 
uh, or then when she's in the car with us. When she's in the car with us, all the normal rules apply to her. It's only during her trip to and from work that there's any difference. Uh, it's fun. It's working. We'll probably have forgotten about it by the time New Year comes along, but I don't know the way it's going. I have a feeling we won't. Uh, there might be weeks where we completely forget to count them, but yeah, I think it's something that will go. So uh, what I'm looking for from uh, you listeners is what could we use as a trophy? Now, I was actually thinking of buying a trophy, but I'd need some sort of title on the trophy that uh, works for all of us. Uh, I was considering getting a little Matchbox mini car, uh, and I've asked them and they don't want that for whatever reason. So I'm going to surprise them with some sort of trophy. So yeah, if you have any idea what I could use for the trophy, uh, where I could get such a trophy, uh, feel free to hit me up, as it were. And one last thing that I want to mention, because the minis reminded me of this. It reminded me of uh, my first car. And I think I've mentioned this before. I may have even mentioned this whole story before. I honestly can't remember. Uh, I said last week, actually, I'm getting to the point where I'm repeating things. Uh, it, I have got a system in place so I could double check what I'm repeating. But that system only came into effect around episode 20-ish. Uh, so there are going to be some things that I might repeat. And, you know, as with all podcasts and conversations you have, there are things you repeat. It's, it's just impossible not to. So I'm not going to get so hung up on that. Uh, if I repeat something, I repeat something. It's th There are new listeners joining the show all the time. Uh, I don't expect everybody to go and listen to the full back catalogue. So you're going to miss out on stuff if I don't repeat stuff. So that's my justification for repeating things. Um so way back in the day, uh, way back in the day, my first car was actually a Mini. Uh, it was a red Mini Cooper. I loved it. Best car I ever had. I regret getting rid of it. I will probably tell that story another time because uh, that's not the point of this story. Uh, it, but it reminded me of, I used to drive around in that Mini and I used to play my music on full blast for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted my music loud. Uh, but two, and this is all coming back to me now that it was obviously a problem. I was deaf <laughs> and I didn't know back then that I had hearing problems. I had no idea how bad my hearing actually was. So to me, it wasn't that loud. People used to say to me, your music, you do, you do know you drive around with your music really loud. And I had the windows down. I'm sat at traffic lights, not realizing that everybody for like six or seven cars back could tell what I was listening to. And I, <laughs> my music tastes are a little bit like odd, I suppose. Uh, well, they're not odd. I, I just was always really into like popular music. So at the time, the cores were dead popular. And I remember that when I had that mini, I was, I was basically listening to the cores on full blast driving around town. <laughs> and I was like, no doubt I think back and people must have thought, what is he doing? doing <laughs> like this little this little irish folk band blasting out in the minute it didn't uh oh i must have looked so crazy it was it was either that or james uh the band james i was <laughs> oh god that's that's actually quite embarrassing now that i think about it i hadn't really considered it much in the past uh but yeah so i thought i'd share that little one with you uh, and one last thing for the news section this week. Uh, I do want to just mention that uh, the school holidays are upon us. They start uh, on, uh, well, for my children, Friday. So their last day in school is Thursday. So they will be off on Friday, which does mean that uh, for the next however many weeks, it's, well, it's a month, isn't it, really? Uh, just a month and a, a bit. Uh, I will be uh, with children uh, <laughs> or oh, actually there is a time when we're going away. So I will potentially miss an episode uh, or two. I don't know. I don't want to. My plan is to always have uh, an episode ready to go. Uh, but if that happens, so if one week you don't get an episode, don't panic. I've not forgotten I've just not been able to record. Uh, there will be situations where I've I've got things that I've organized to do with the children and I just won't be able to record. So don't panic too much because uh, I know this is the thing that you wait for every single week. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. If I miss an episode, it's okay. I will be back the week after. Or you know what? Let's say worst case scenario, I don't get to record at all during the summer holidays. I will be back after the summer holidays, but that's not going to happen. I will, I will get something out, even if it's a really short episode. Uh, I will do my best to get something out every single week. There will just might be something that happens where I can't. That is all. 
So this week, I am telling my car seat to buzz off. I, I thought of this one last night, actually. It's been driving me mad for ages now. And uh, I had nothing for the buzz off section this week. Nothing had really like annoyed me. And I was I got in my car. I was driving home uh, from, from work. And I thought to myself, why is my rear view mirror in the wrong place? I don't understand. And I, just as I reached up to adjust it, I realized it wasn't my rear view mirror that was in the wrong place. My car seat had dropped. So it was lower. And this happens every now and then. I don't know what's causing it. I don't know if it's going down slowly over time or if it's a case of it just suddenly drops. Or am I getting in the car so heavily and jumping down into my seat that it's causing it to drop? But it's like, you know, when you, so you have a handle that, that like essentially pumps it up or pumps it down. It takes a good five pumps to get it back up. And I notice this from time to time. I just get in the car. The car seat is really, really low to the ground. And I can barely see over the steering wheel and I, I just can't work out what's doing it. So yeah, that could buzz off this week. For this week's pod tales, I have been, I've actually been looking forward to this one uh, for a while um, because uh, it's a conspiracy theory. Now I'm not usually into conspiracy theories. Oh, actually, that's not true. I'm not usually the kind of person that is that I, I don't want to say falls for conspiracy theories because it, you know, not all conspiracy theories are going to be false. They're just sometimes rooted in uh, delusion <laughs> is, is probably the only thing I can think of there. Um, but this one is really interesting. Now, uh, there, I, I do genuinely believe there is a little bit of truth in this one. Uh, probably more than we know, actually, because, well, there, there's no doubt about it. Um, but I do think it is a little bit over the top as well. I am talking about dead internet theory. Uh, I'm going to read to you a little bit about what dead internet theory is, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. The dead internet theory is an online conspiracy theory that asserts that the internet now consists mainly of bot activity and automatically generated content manipulated by algorithmic curation to intentionally manipulate the population and minimize organic human activity. Proponents of the theory believe these bots were created intentionally to help manipulate algorithms and boost search results in order to manipulate consumers. Some proponents of the theory accuse government agencies of using bots to manipulate public perception. The data given for this death is generally around 2016 and 2017. I said the data then, I meant the date. The date given for this death is generally around 2016 or 2017. Uh, the dead internet theory has gained traction because many of the observed phenomena are quantifiable, uh, such as increased bot traffic, but the literature does not support the full theory. Uh, Caroline Buster, uh, founder of the media platform New Models, was quoted in an article in the Atlantic calling much of a dead internet theory a paranoid fantasy. Even if there are legitimate criticisms involving bot traffic and the integrity of the internet, but she also does agree with the overarching idea. Uh, in an article in the New Atlantis, Robert Mariani uh, called the theory a mix between a genuine conspiracy theory and a creepy pasta. Uh, the dead internet theory is sometimes used to refer to an observable increase in content generated via large language models, uh, such as ChatGPT, appearing as popular internet spaces uh, without mention of the full theory. Okay, so to break that down a little bit, right? So the whole idea of dead internet theory is that it's, the, the internet is just bots talking to themselves, uh, which... To a degree is definitely true. Like you, you will see this on uh, Facebook a lot uh, and it's something that the older generation tend to fall for as opposed to, well, actually, no, that's not entirely accurate. The younger generation do fall for it as well, uh, but it is, is absolutely more of a uh, an older generation and people that are already rad radicalized into certain margins. Uh, like, for example, and... I'm not getting political here. I'm not trying to uh, incite any violence with anybody, but you find like the MAGA crowd, so the, the Donald Trump followers, they will post a lot of uh, ridiculous stuff online that uh, will try and make it look like 
uh, that people are trying to take away their freedoms and, and things like that. Uh, and a lot of the time, these are just AI-generated images, like very clearly AI-generated images uh, with like, a, it'll say, uh, follow me, it's my birthday. In fact, there is there is one going around currently and it's an old guy and it says, I'm 107 years old, it's my birthday, all I want is likes. And it's a picture of an old guy sat in front of a birthday cake and it is very, very clearly an AI generated image. It's it looks painted. <laughs> it's really that bad. And people are sharing it online uh, and liking it and adding comments to it. But the comments that you see don't always make sense. Uh, like somebody will write something and somebody will put uh, like a comment just saying it's sad, isn't it? And the truth is, is that was probably just a bot comment. It wasn't in any way, shape or form a real person. And that's where the whole theory sort of comes into play. There is a lot of content that's generated by AIs that's only being commented on by AIs. And then it forces it higher in the algorithm, which then gets it in front of real viewers and thus helps skew their view of the world. And it's definitely a problem, but I, I, I agree that it's probably not a, as big of a problem that... Uh, we think it is, uh, but it is definitely something that is getting worse. And so we need to be careful uh, and we need to help people understand the the way this the way this works. We, you know, we need to help people understand what AI generated content is. And we need to point it out when it happens. You know, if, if one of your relatives posts something on Facebook and it's clearly an AI generated image and they're posting it for whatever reason, uh, it's usually sick children. Uh, is what they do. They'll post pictures of sick children saying that this child has, you know, this terminally ill ill disease. Uh, the government won't do anything to help them. Uh, all they've asked for is, is a thousand likes before they die and things like that. When you do a reverse image search on that on that photograph, if it's a photograph and not an AI generated image, it's usually from something from 20 years ago that was completely unrelated and not even half as, as serious as they're making out. Point it out. Tell them. You know, they, they probably would want to know if they're sharing false information and uh, contributing to this phenomenon, as it were. Uh, so, yeah, I, I will leave a link to the full Wikipedia article for this because there is quite a lot of information in there. And it, it doesn't make for good reading out loud uh, because it's not in a particularly good order. But I did want to point it out to everybody. Uh, and I've got to leave a link in the show notes for a YouTube video as well. Uh, a pretty good YouTube video on it. And it describes what it is. And it describes how it's not as serious as it's uh, being made out to be, but how it could be. And how it is affecting certain uh, demographics of people uh, more than others. Uh, usually it's the Facebook people, to be truthful. Uh, it's a very much a shame, but, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, and it's our job as people that understand this kind of thing to to educate. That's a freebie is made possible by all of you. Without you, it would be just me talking into the ether. And I could only do that for so long. Uh, if you want even more of that's a freebie, you should join. Uh, that's a freebie plus uh, just head to the show notes or that's a freebie.com and click on the link uh, where you can join for just four pound a month and you get access to the uncut feed uh, this is the same show you know and love but with zero edits and zero cuts this means you get to hear me planning the show and all the mistakes i make along the way and be warned though this version of the show can contain some spicy language uh, the uncut feed also includes a special that's a freebie uh, plus topic every single week. Uh, this week, I talked about uh, my trip to the dentist, and I also became a US citizen. If you want to know what that actually means, you need to subscribe to That's a Freebie Plus. Uh, and if, as if that's not enough, you also get it early, straight after recording, in fact. So I'm currently recording this on Monday at 11 a.m. Well, it's currently 11 a.m. and I'm almost finished recording. That means it will be in the That's a Freebie Plus feed by lunchtime on Monday, uh, because all I'll need to do is cut this section out and then I'll post it. That's how much quicker you get it. So no more Thursdays. You know, Mondays. Oh, you get it when I record it. I don't always record on a Monday. However, most of the time I do record 
on a Monday. Uh, and you also get a access to any specials that I make and an exclusive members-only Discord server so you can chat with me and other listeners. Uh, and if you can't or you don't want to join Plus, that is okay. That's fine. Uh, just listening helps me out. Uh, you can still help the show, though, by sharing it far and wide and leaving a review in your podcast client of choice. So please do that. So this week's pick of the week is uh, another podcast. And like I said last week, I am going to be doing these podcasts uh, in alphabetical order. So the first one was ATP. And this one is uh, the next letter in the alphabet. Funnily enough, uh, that won't always happen. Uh, it is a podcast called Biff, Superhero TV and Movies. That's B-I-F-F, Biff, uh, just in case you couldn't understand what I said. Uh, and it is quite literally what it says in the title. It's presented by uh, Dan Moran, who's one of my favorite authors. It's got uh, Guy English and John Maltz uh, are the uh, presenters of the podcast. And they basically talk about whatever the current uh, superhero TV or movie show is that's on. Uh, and if they haven't got one to talk about, they'll revisit something from the past. They've recently revisited all of the previous X-Men movies, and that inspired me to revisit all the previous X-Men movies as well. It's good. It's a good podcast. What can I say? Uh, you should give it a listen if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, they they tend to do an overview of every episode or movie, then they discuss the points of the movie, and it's fun. Uh, that's what's so good about it. It's not a completely deep analytical visa, you know, where you get those videos on YouTube, the 10 things you missed in this movie. It's not that kind of stuff. It's just, a, this is how I felt about it. This is what I liked. This is what I didn't like. And then they give it a rating at the end. The rating system is really hard to understand. And I'm not going to go through it right now. There are episodes where they talk about the rating system. And you do kind of get a feel of what it is that they're talking about when they're, they're going through the ratings. And yeah, it's a good podcast. You should totally give it a listen. Uh, it's one of the podcasts on the Incomparable Network. And which you'll find that quite a few of the podcasts I listen to come from there. Uh, so yeah, give it a listen if you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> If you recall last week, I asked the question to end the show, are you a whippy dippy driver? Um, first of all, I should probably quantify what that is. It's, you know, when you're driving down a road and you always get that person who's driving a car, uh, usually a BMW or an Audi, uh, who swerves in and out of all the traffic going around them to try and get wherever they want to go quicker. Uh, so they're whippy because they're whipping in and out of traffic and they're dippy because it's bloody stupid, <laughs> right? That's what a whippy dippy driver is in my head. Um, whenever one of them got, like swerves in and out, I always call them a whippy dippy driver. There's one actually every single morning in a BMW when I'm driving to work, he comes flying down the road, he swerves around me. I, now I'm in the, the right-hand lane. There's two lanes, a right and a left-hand lane. He'll either drive right up my butt uh, to get past me, and I'm not, I'm not going slow. I'm doing the, the right speed on this road. If anything, I'm probably speeding as well a little bit uh, because I'm trying to get to my tram on time. Uh, and he and he'll come along, he'll and he'll swerve around me, swerve around the car in the left hand lane, in and out of all the cars, and then we all end up stopped at the same set of traffic lights. And that's all that ever happens. You end up stopped at the same set of traffic lights as everybody else. You get nowhere any quicker even when you do when like people do that thing where they barrel down the road and they're like they're doing 60 in a 30 zone and the you still catch up with them every single time at the traffic lights because that's what the traffic lights are designed to do they're designed to slow you down <laughs> and, and and they work and it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen i can promise you that if you do that nobody has ever looked at you and gone oh man you're so cool i wish i could be like you no what they do is they look at you and they have a certain set of words that they use to describe you and you're just giving other people that drive the same make of car as you do a bad name so yeah that's whippy dippy drivers uh i do have uh another question to end the uh, show this week and you'll be surprised to hear that this is not a driving one i've moved on to pedestrians i wonder how many questions i can get about pedestrians uh, this one is what do you do if you realize that you need to turn around in the middle of the street <laughs> 